Is that running? Okay, so first of all, really sorry, we're eight minutes late starting, but as you can see, a different camera. I'm trying to run it from the GoPro to get a better, better picture, broader picture. So I'm very sorry if you've been waiting for this or missed it. It'll be on live anyway, so you'll be able to catch up later, but apologies that we're running ever so slightly late. So it's, it's Monday, it's two o'clock-ish, and we are doing our Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3 um, striking and fielding set of videos. Last week we had an introduction to fielding. Remember that in striking fielding games we've got batting, bowling and fielding are our main skills. So it's our second fielding lesson today. So we're going to be dealing with a ball that's coming towards us in the air and we're also going to be dealing with a ball that has gone past us and is running along in on the ground. So those are our two skills that we're going to work on today. But I'm going to start with a bit of a warm up. It is really cold out today. It is really windy. We've had to weigh down the um, tripods doesn't keep blowing over. It's cold, I want to get going. So I'm going to start with just walking. I don't know how much space you've got. You're going to need a reasonable sort of length of space. We've got what here? I don't know. Let me have a look. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got about eight metres length here. You're going to need something like that or longer for the skills that we're doing today. Good news that from Wednesday you can go and do these sorts of things in the park with your mum, dad, people from your household. Um, this will be absolutely fine to do loads of social distancing in all these activities today. You can see that I'm starting to change direction. I'm moving in and out. Is the sound coming through all right? I can go backwards. Is the sound working? I can go in zigzags. I can move around sideways and I'm going to start building up the pace now and walking a little bit quicker. It's cold, I want to get going. I'm going to build it up into a bit of a jog and I'm going to keep changing direction. I'm zigzagging, I'm sidestepping, I'm changing direction, I'm changing direction. If you're doing this with mum or dad, you can follow each other around and keep changing over who is taking the lead. I'm moving in and out, changing directions. I'm going to do some skipping and I'm doing some low skips. Don't laugh at me. I'm doing some low skipping. I can do some high skipping. I'll see how high you can get. Drive up with the hand, drive up with the knee. Really good dynamic warm up action. I can do hopping on one leg, hopping on the other leg. Bouncing on both feet. I'm going to start getting my shoulders and arms warmed up. I'm going to do some breaststroke. Already got my breathing rate up a little bit. Feeling a bit warmer. Oh, come on sunshine. Here we go, a bit of sunshine. I'm going to do some front crawl. Nice big arm actions, almost brushing my ears as they come over. I'm going to do some backstroke. Mind I don't bash anything with my arms. I'm going to do some butterfly. <laughs> Both arms over, big circles. Oh, shake those off and we're going to finish with a touch the ground little game just to get us bending twisting up and down a little bit more you can just pause this and you could make it up for yourself but basically I'm jogging around and my partner in this case William is going to shout out some body parts like one hand two hands knee elbow bottom tummy and I've got to touch the ground with that body part. If you're doing elbows and knees, obviously be careful you don't bash them on the floor. So I'm ready when you are, William. Be gentle with me. Start with lots of hands. Okay, uh, right hand. okay some children might not know their right from the left. So we might just say one hand or two hands.
Oh! Oh! He's mean! Um, I don't have an um. Both hands. Belly. Belly? I don't have a belly. What are you talking about? One hand. One knee. And we do this quite often with groups in school and we can make it competitive and see you know, who was the last person to be up and running again. So you can make those into a game if you've got a couple of children or a couple of adults joining in at home. Okay, so there we go, I've done a little bit of warm up. I've loosened up, I've got my breathing rate up, I've got my heart rate going, I'm a little bit warmer, I'm ready to go. So, first of all, we're gonna deal with a ball that is coming towards us on the ground. So we're gonna have to put those down. I'm gonna need you with a ball. So, here we go. So. A ball is rolling towards me and I want to stop it and get it back. So you want just one ball, Will, because I'm going to be throwing it back to you. Okay, so here comes a ball. It's coming along the floor. Nice and slowly. First things first, I've got to actually get in line with the ball. So the ball was coming over here and I was over here. The wind's blowing it. So first things first is you need to move in line with the ball. So you're going to roll it down there again, Will, not to me. That's it, and I need to get in line with the ball. So the first thing is get in line with the ball, and then you can see I've got two hands, <laughs> stay still ball, and I'm gonna try, and once I'm in line with it, I'm ready to receive it, two hands down, I'm gonna scoop it up with two hands, and I can feel the ball back to where it came. So, here comes the ball. I'm gonna get in line with it, scoop it up, and return it. And the throws, as we've been doing with all of our throwing, underarm throw at the moment, is, is opposite foot forward. So, you can start off nice and easy, and it's just straight to, be straight to you. So I'm already in line with it, I don't need to move. Scoop it up, throw it back. Keep going, Well, There we go, I had to move a little bit for that one, and move it back. And if you're working with someone really young, and they're struggling with this a little bit, just, just roll it straight to them, and they can just pick it up two hands, and pop it back. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to move. Two hands, pop it back. We've got a bit of space. You can now start to make me move a little bit left or a little bit right, William. And we're quite close to each other, so he's got to roll it really slowly. If you are further apart, if you've gone to the park to do this, or if you've got a bigger garden, that's great. He's making me move to the left to the right. And I'm getting in line with the ball, scooping it up and back. Now, we've got a nice smooth uh, surface here, relatively smooth, but if you're playing out on a cricket pitch or out on a rounders pitch, the ball might well be on grass and it will bounce all over the place. So, the long barrier is a technique we use to try and make sure the ball doesn't go past us. So at the moment, the only thing stopping the ball is the width of my hands. That's the only thing. So that is, what, 20 centimetres wide, something like that. That's all I've got at the moment, stopping the ball going past. And I've been successful. Not one ball has got past me yet, but it's a soft ball, travelling slowly on a nice smooth surface. So, in the long barrier, we're trying to put the longest barrier behind my hands to stop the ball going miles away from me if I miss it with my hands. So the keys to this are that I'm going to turn sideways and I'm going to create the longest barrier I can from the tip of my front foot to the tip of my back foot that I've now got what a meter maybe of barrier here. My hands will hopefully pick up the ball here anyway but if it misses my hands I've got a metre long barrier to stop the ball. Now, if I'm running that way, so the ball is going over there, Will, really slowly for this one, please. So, if the ball's going that way, off I go. I'm down to my long barrier. I scoop up the ball without falling over, nearly did, and it's back. Now, if the ball was going this way, then I've got to turn 
the other way around, it'll actually be my left foot at the front, my right foot at the back. So it may be, this is really hard, even for like uh, key stage uh, four, still struggle with this, the, you'll have a natural preference to whether you prefer to turn to your right or turn to your left but it will generally be dominated by the way you're running. So if I'm having to run over there to make my long barrier, it will be this side. If I'm having to run over this way to make my long barrier, it's this side. So let's do a few of those. Just first of all, nice and easy ones coming straight to me. So here it comes. I turn sideways, scoop up the ball. There it comes. Same again. And this time I'll imagine that I've missed the ball with my hands. And look, it's still, oh! it still managed to get through. So there's common mistake number one, is my back foot was all the way up and it left just enough room there for the ball to get under. What can I do to stop that? Well, so if my back foot had been down, that wouldn't have happened. So we we'll try and keep that back foot down. I'm going to show you, where did it go? Oh, I'm going to try and show you common mistake number two. So here it comes. It's missed my hands and it's still got through. Where was the gap? I left a massive gap between my foot and my knee. So the two areas where this can go wrong is, and this does hurt your knees on the concrete, you're already better off doing it on the, on, the, on the grass, but leaving a gap here or leaving a gap here. So I'm going to try not to do those two things. We'll do a couple more of these because my knees are going to hurt. Here we go, here it comes. So I'm ready to move. I get in line with the ball. Down I go, I scoop it up. If it had missed my hands, I'm safe, I'm safe. There goes the ball back to my partner. We'll do one to this side. So I've got to get in line with the ball. Down I go, scoop it up. I've left a little bit of a gap there. I could have tightened it up a little bit. That one's down. So mums, dads, if you're going to do some cr cricket coaching with your boys and girls or some rounders coaching with your boys and girls, this is the long barrier. It's a really good practice to do. Just get out on some nice grass and just get that ball rolling on the floor. And if they're beyond that, just being able to scoop it up with two hands, get them to go down to a long barrier. Okay, we're now going to talk about dealing with a ball that has, we've, we've lost it, okay? We either couldn't get in line with it or it went through the long barrier, it's rolling away from us. So for these, Will's going to be just rolling the ball towards the gate and I'm going to be chasing. Now, if you're out on the fields or out, you live in a close and you're out on the road, that's fine. He could just throw this really hard now and I've got no chance of getting it. So he, please allow me, I want to overtake it before I go into the gate. Okay, so here we go, number one. It's rolling. I overtake it, get in front of it, scoop it up with two hands. Tricky for us to demonstrate today because the wind is blowing it back really quickly. We'll try that again. So a little bit harder this time. I'm overtaking it, getting in front of it, scooping it up with two hands. There's the throwback. Once again, that was perfect. Overtaking it, getting in front of it, scooping it up. I had to sort of go around a bit of a funny way because of the table there. Didn't want to bash into the table. Here we go. Oh, overtaking it, <laughs> nearly into the hedge. Overtaking it, scooping up with two hands, fielding the ball back. A little bit lighter. Overtaking it, oh, couldn't quite get past it in time. A little bit more gentle. <laughs> well, <laughs> the trouble is the wind. What, what, if the wind blows, it's not going anywhere. Overtaking, in front scooping up with two hands and returning. Perfect. So that's what we're looking for, for younger players learning how to field. Overtaking it, getting in front of it, scooping it up. Next step, we could get the ball back quicker. 
I could get the ball back quicker to Will if I pick it up a little bit earlier. So I'm going to just try and get alongside it now and pick it up. So here it goes. I'm chasing it. As soon as I get alongside it, I'm picking it up, turning and returning. Here we go. Chasing it. As soon as I get alongside it, I'm picking it up, I'm turning, I'm throwing it back. And you'll see that the main difference there is I'm picking it up with one hand. It would be really awkward. Let's go again. It would be really awkward for me to be alongside it and try to pick up with two hands. I'm just going to pick up with the nearest hand. So do you want to come from that side, Will, for me? There we go. Towards the gate. So I'm chasing it. I get alongside it. I'm picking it up. I'm throwing it back. Because he wasn't looking, we missed it. <laughs> but I missed his head. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Chasing. Get alongside it. Pick it up. And throw it back. That's my throw, not your catch. So, you'll see that. A couple of key things. I'm right-handed. And you'll see on the last few, if you watch carefully, I'm trying to alter my run because I want to pick it up on my right hand side. And that's one of the reasons why I just got in our little space here. I've got Will to move across. So roll it again, please, Will. And you'll see that this all works great so long as the ball is on my right hand side. So I'm chasing it. I can pick it up on this side. If we go back to the other side for me, Will, and roll it straight there towards the gate. You see that I don't like this because it's on my left. I need to switch over and just try and move so that I can pick it up with my right hand. Okay, so chasing it, making sure you've got the ball on the side of your dominant hand. If you're left-handed, you would want it to be on your left-hand side. If you're right-handed, you're going to want it to be on your right-hand side. I'm going to add one last bit, and this is for the pros amongst you. If I can get the ball to not blow around for a second, let's see if it stays there. I'm going to try and pick up the ball with my right hand whilst my right foot is next to it. And I know we talk a lot about opposition in throwing and catching in sports, but for this instance, I'm trying to pick it up when my right hand and foot are next to the ball. My right foot's next to the ball, I pick it up with my right hand. Now, rather than standing up now, and taking a few steps to turn around and throw the ball, I'm going to try and pick it up here and just turn and throw. And that way I can get it back much, much quicker. So on that side again for me, make it easier for me as a right hander. So really slowly towards the gate and we'll go through this in slow motion alongside. And there's my pickup. Right foot, right hand, Oop. <laughs> turn and throw in one action. Let's go again. Right hand, right foot, turn and throw. Oop. Right hand, right foot, turn and throw. And even in my sort of hyper slow motion one, you'll see that I had a bit of a wobble on. You will want to just try and fix yourself as you turn. Maybe have your lead arm pointing where you want to throw and then your overarm throw back to your partner. If you've got more than one child, you can get two of them racing after a ball. Really good. Chasing for the ball. Looking for that dominant hand and the same foot next to the ball on the pickup. So two skills we've looked at today dealing with a ball uh, coming towards us on the ground, dealing with a ball that's running away from us. Some skills for you to go away and practice and be ready, hopefully for a bit of a cricket season, a bit of a round of season. Top pulling my ball to pieces. <laughs> Next week, we're gonna move on to some batting skills. So you'll need something to use as a ball. If you don't have a tennis ball, rolled up socks, anything similar, you can use it, went down to the bottom bit. Um, something to use as a ball and you need something to use as a bat. Now if you've got a tennis racket, a cricket bat, a rounders bat, a paddle of any sort, a chopping board, a saucepan, 
Check with mum and dad first. Anything you can use as a bat next week. We're going to look at a few little batting practices and batting games. But you'll need something to use as a ball, something to use as a bat next week. Tomorrow, probably better if you're like year 10 or older. We've got circuit training tomorrow at two o'clock. And for that, you will need some water, somewhere you can lie down on, preferably if you've got a mat or something if you've got any hard surface if you're indoor on carpet you won't need it at all you might want a towel to lie on um, and you're going to need something heavy to use as a weight okay something heavy to use as a weight if you haven't got any dumbbells or things like that in the house completely understand in which case the heaviest things you can get hold of to use instead of a dumbbell that might be a, uh, a six pint milk carton filled with water done up securely might be some heavy books, might be a chair that you can use to just to lift up, lift around if you've got space without smashing into things. And then on Wednesday, we've got our Little Ease Foundation Key Stage 1, and we're going to be doing some games there. You're going to need five pieces of A4 paper and something or some things to use, either as a ball, a bean bag, some rolled up socks, but if you can get a few of those, three of those each, that would be great. Five uh, pieces of A4 paper and something to use the skipping rope so if you've got a skipping rope that's great if you've got little a hoop a hoop would be great much easier to skip with a hoop than a rope uh, a piece of rope that you know they can hold in two hands and goes around the, the bottom of their feet so some sort of rope would be great if you don't have a skipping rope that is for wednesday last plug from me as a school games organizer across south lincolnshire don't forget it's our virtual school games competition we're into week four and this morning we reached the we launched the primary school cricket uh, challenge there's four really good challenges similar to ones that I, you, you've seen on my website already but you can enter them uh, virtually it's a county competition Everyone will get recognised for taking part and there will be county finalists for those challenges. So look that up if you haven't done so already. If you're secondary school age, we're into the last week of the Boccia Challenge. Really easy challenge to do. Go away and give it a go, please. Have a great week. Hopefully it's warmer tomorrow. I'm going to be indoors tomorrow doing the circuit, so I don't mind. But hopefully we'll get some sunshine soon. Thank you very much. Sorry we're a few minutes late starting. Take care. Thank you. Bye.